there are four forms of chiari malformation. The third and the fourth form are extremely rare. The most common are the number one and the number two. Both of these malformations have in common the feature of the tonsillar herniation, but uh, the carry one malformation and the carry two malformation are radically different on the grounds of the mechanism of their own production. The carry one malformation is a disease of the bone which secondarily affects the central nervous system. In this case, there is an abnormal development of the base of the skull and the upper part of the cervical spine. The end point of this abnormal development is the production of a box which is too small for its own contents. In a nutshell, what happens is that the inferior part of the cerebellum, which is the closest to the exit from the skull, gets squeezed out from the skull because the skull is too small. And this is the equivalent of what it would happen if you opened a tube of toothpaste and you squeezed with your hand forcefully. So in this case, the inferior part of the spinal cord is completely normal. The brain, per se, is normal. The only defect is in the bone, and the tonsillar herniation is an effect. In the Chiari II malformation, we have the opposite. We have a primary problem of the central nervous system, which affects, as a consequence, the development of the bone. In this case, the problem is not up here in the skull, but the problem is down here at the end of the spinal cord. The problem is that during the development of the spinal cord, the spinal cord stays stuck outside of the limits of the spine and the entire spinal cord gets pulled down. And together with the spinal cord, even inferior parts of the brain get pulled down and in particularly the tonsils. So in this case we have a squeezed out mechanism for the tonsil in the Chiari 1 malformation and a pulled down mechanism in the Chiari 2 malformation. There are repercussions for both the diagnosis and the treatment for you patients. The first repercussion is that obviously you're here because you have the suspicion of a Chiari 1 malformation or already have the diagnosis of Chiari 1 malformation, but the main problem is did anybody ever, of your doctors so far, take a look at this to the inferior part of your spine? Because obviously between Chiari 1 and Chiari 2, there is a difference. Both of them have the tonsillar herniation, but the difference at the base is enormous. The way to look at it is an MRI of the lumbar spine. The MRI of the lumbar spine is part of your workup here at the Chiari Institute. What are the repercussions? The repercussions is that if you have a normal MRI of the lumbar spine and tonsillar herniation, you have a bona fide diagnosis of Chiari 1 malformation. But if you have an abnormal MRI of the lumbar spine with these kind of characteristics, you are not in the Chiari 1 anymore, but become a Chiari 2 malformation. The final repercussion is in the management. If you have a diagnosis of Chiari 1, your surgical activity needs to be addressing, needs to be addressing this area of your body. While if you have Chiari 2 malformation, the first place where you have to start with your management is over here.